Hey guys, Susanna Heasdale here. Um, I'm going to be doing something different. I've been wanting to do in during this isolation time. I've got plenty of time on my hands and I seem to be um, the sewing themed videos seem to be quite popular. So something I haven't done for years is make a, um, a little like felt is just awesome. So to make a little felt toy or you know like a stuffed um it just was i went to gail's patchwork and i went to get something for for mother's day for myself because i know the boys are hopeless and i got myself this beautiful pair of they're from france bohin france um embroidery scissors which i wanted to get something of good quality and while i was there i saw um what is it may blossom designs by simone gooding so I got this from Gail's Patchwork. So she does have a website. If you are wanting to go on and have a look, you may be able to, or www.mayblossom.com. There you go. Um, it's eight inches in finishing size. So she, it's actually quite a decent size. So there you go. Stands up this tall. So it's pretty good. Um... So I thought I'd do a little step-by-step -step, um, working with me and I can do this as long as I, you know, mention the designer. Um, you've got to go out and buy yourself a pattern if you want. Um, so this is a good one for beginners. If you haven't, you've always wanted to make something like this, but you've never done anything. Using felt is probably the best and the most forgiving and this is a really good quality felt i got it from um, gail's um, patchwork which is she gets really good quality stuff in so because you've got to stuff it you really want a good quality so what we're going to be doing to begin with is i know it's something a little bit different from my channel but um i, I wanted to venture out so you, you get your um, pattern and the easiest way to do anything I've just gotten I might even sew it on onto here I'll, um, you just cut them out they've got all the little different pieces cut it out and stick it on to a um, a tougher bit of cardboard so just roughly cut them out we're going to glue it on and then um, stick it on. So there you go. You still get to do a little bit of paperwork, <laughs> so to speak. Um, and I mean, even if you've if you've never ever done anything like this and you thought you may not be interested, when you work with felt, it is very addictive because it's so forgiving. Like you don't have to be an expert <laughs> with felt it, it's um, like a lot of other stuff it frays and all that kind of stuff but felt is just really really good to work with because um, it doesn't fray on you so it'll be a bit, probably quite a few little videos because um, I'm gonna be you know I'll do one part and then you know I've got to do another bit I might even pause it so I'll be pausing a lot just so I'll, I'll cut up the, the rest and then I'll show you what to do with it okay back again i'll probably just be stopping and starting for a bit okay so the easiest way to do this is just um using some glue stick um just stick these down onto some sort of thicker whether it's thicker cardstock or whatever it is okay Just in little bits and pieces. Uh, there we go. Um, and then we're going to be cutting around these. So it's so cute. She had the most beautiful patterns. Like there was another one, this little teddy, and it had. I was very going, very tempted to get that one. Um, and it had a little um, white cabbage. Um, butterfly or moth whatever you call it um, which are really prominent at this time in Australia like 
when it, even when I just walked up because I can walk to this patchwork shop um, I reckon I saw about 20 and I thought oh that would be really nice to make that one because it's sort of prominent at, at this time now this is where you get all your little bits that you just chuck in in between got my sewing machine off to the side here Jigsaw puzzle. There's the ear. I haven't made one of these for years. It's nice to um, do something like this. I've made some of the cutest little teddies. Actually, I should get a um, my little felt teddy that I've got in the lounge room um, and show you. I used to make these, all this sort of stuff. I had a a, um, a craft group that we had at our church and we would get together as a um, a committee make you know something and then we would have other ladies that we would show how to do it we'd have this and we had it was once a month on a Thursday night and we would have that's all I can fit on there I think um, and we would teach all these ladies how to do, um, you know, floral arrangements. And I really miss those days. It was so, so good. And um, it was at our at our church once a month. And a lot of the people that came weren't churchgoers. It was just something that we did for the community and absolutely loved doing. Um, it was about, about 80 ladies in the end. So we all had a table each. There was about, um, I think, maybe 10 of us on the committee. And we would have a table each with around about um, 8 to 10 people on a table. And we would get together as a committee on a night at the um, leader's place who led the group. And... Um, they, they were fun nights too. I really loved that just to get together with the you know the, the all the girls, eight to ten girls that we had, different people over the years, um, and we would learn it and then we would teach how to make it. And we've got lots and different, um, different pieces. I think one of these this might have been something we made something similar on one of those things. But I have got the stuff like this that we would make. That's like a, um, a, a, a spool and an egg cup and, you know, that's, you know, stuff it stuff like that. Really quite nice. Pretty. And it was back in the days when floral arrangements were all the rage. You know, you'd, make, you'd get dried flower arrangements. Even made a tissue box at one stage. I think that might have been earlier on in the piece. That's true granny craft, that is. Now, um... Uh, just chuck it on any which way. Doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, so there you go. Life lessons on what Susanna did. Um, yeah, I love it. I quite enjoy. That's probably why I, I enjoy um, teaching stuff on on uh, my YouTube channel because it, um, it sort of I just enjoy teach, teaching people stuff. You can make things for people, but, I, you know, like you can buy a man a fish or teach him the fish and he can be, you know, fed for the rest of his life. I'm a big philosopher believer of that. You can teach people how to do it and that way they appreciate um, what, you know, how much work goes into it. And it's teaching somebody else a new skill. And I just loved it. It was a really nice time and now I'm doing it again more by myself but I've got quite a few subbies out there that are willing to learn um, you know different skills other than journaling it's not just plum it's the vintage blend which is not just I, do, I make a lot of journals because it incorporates everything that I've learned over the years um, but I really do enjoy slow stitching and sewing and I haven't made a teddy or a doll or anything like that. I used to make them quite a bit um, for a long time. So 
well, you got the drift of what I'm going to do. I'll probably pause this and finish cutting these. And I might grab that little felt teddy and show you. So I um, don't want you in jewel to have to watch all of that. Okay, back again. Here's this little teddy that I was talking about. Isn't it adorable? Look at these tiny little yo-yos. It's got a bit of dust. It's been <laughs> sitting in a little spot. And I ha even found these tiny little glasses which I put in there. And I think I was supposed to do a uh, French knot. Never did get around to it. I think they're still pins. <laughs> so it's had, had pins for eyes for years. So, um, and then um, little buttons to put the those on. It really is very dusty. It's so cute. But you'd be amazed how much stuffing is in these babies, I tell you. So, and then... Um, I can't remember what he was called. What? Um, but it, very, very easy. It was a good one to, um, for a beginner. So how adorable is he? I'm just going to put him there. You might be able to see him. And then I will show you what I was talking about with the group of ladies that I did. Um, I'll show you. We, I did a friendship quilt. Um, I might be able to show you, like I've got this hanging on my wall and there's nine of us, yes, yeah, there was nine, uh, but ten including me. So each month we got together and we would exchange, a, like we gave them a theme, so I gave them, I had this shabby chic colour and I wanted um, vintage and sewing and, and, you know, china and all that. So um, they did stuff from their stash and then we put it all together. So I've got that there. I don't know if you can see it. There. There. I'll roll it up. Look at this. This is like a tiny, tiny cross stitch. Oh, it's going a bit berserk. My camera does not like it. Um, a doily. So this is a real, you know, so a lot of these people, like this lady um, has moved away, you know, on the other side of Melbourne. Um, I think... This lady up here, she actually lives in Perth, which is miles away. She lives in Sydney. Uh, still in Ballarat. Ballarat. She still lives in Ballarat. So a few of them still live in Ballarat. Yep. So, but um, here we go. I don't know if you've seen that one. And then there's that one. Roll it up. I've got this hanging on my wall. And it's an absolutely beautiful keepsake of that time. It's painted. So I've always been into tea and all that kind of really pretty um and then i got all the pa we got together once a month at a cafe exchanged who we were making for for that month and then we all put it together and you should see like how differently they turned out and everyone's i gave everyone a piece of this fabric so mine was really uniform <laughs> and um yeah i mean i'm just putting it away okay yeah so um and that's something I can treasure for years. You know, I look at that all the time and it puts a smile on my face. I remember that time in my life when um, we did it for about 15 years, I think. Started off early, but then, um, you know. Okay, now, what we're going to be doing, I might even actually read all the bits and pieces that you need. You need, like, a certain amount of felt for the whatever colour that, you're doing so you just need felt um beads for the eyes just little black beads it says german glass doll beads but you could probably just get just normal black beads or if you want to be really slack like me <laughs> just get black pins um embroidery thread mm. green and white i think that's for the um for the little hat because it's a strawberry it's got the strawberry at the end of the tail and there's actually a little bit of fabric behind the um the top part of the strawberry because the hat's a strawberry and then in the end of the tail's a strawberry and then there's a bit of ribbon okay um good quality wadding like stuffing now doll needles i've got these ones big doll needles so they're really quite long because you need them to go through when you're threading like um like that so um when you're actually putting the thing together so it doesn't need to be necessarily dull needles as long as they're 
fairly long long enough that one's a really big one that's for a really big doll but even the smallest one probably the medium you know something that long just to get through what else we got um you see i've, got, I've had these because that's when back in the day when i used to make all this sort of stuff um and just general sewing machine thread to match the felt which i've got i'm making um this girl in she just reminds me of being a girl um in this yellowy color sort of a yellowy mustardy color i bought this as well um and i had in my hand a another one he was called dash and it's a reindeer which i'll probably make another one close to christmas because I, I thought i'll put him away for now but i bought the felt to go with it and i've got two foxes that come with clothes as well that i wouldn't mind making but um we'll just start with this one for now see how it goes and if you really like it and want to learn how to do more just let me know now okay please read all the instructions before beginning see um a very tiny seam is needed for strawberry okay i have in the past sewn and done things a little bit different strawberry head i'll do the body first so get your little body parts sounds funny doesn't it and that's so cute And where are we? Is it this or a pen? Where is my pen? Oh, here we go. It's all in here. Some people cut out individual bits and then they. So I cut out bits. And then often will like especially for the arms and legs but the body might be a little bit different we'll see how we go probably probably might pay for me to read the instructions first it's been a while <laughs> so um it says cut two So cute. Okay. Put you up there. Fold that in half. See things like the leaf. Let's see a different colour. Strawberry e cut two felt and then ah, oh, so you have to do cut them. Um okay now so i'll trace where's the um where's the ear no that's not going to work there there we go that, um, you just sort of want to put it where you know you're gonna have more i'll see how it goes with this you can pin it down i like to trace it like this and then some people they cut along the outside but i prefer to leave it on there like that and then sew it and then cut it you sew on the actual line rather than um like using this and then cutting it out because it will shrink if you if you know what i mean like as in if you use that and then you cut that out and then sew it it just makes it all much, so much harder whereas you actually sew on the actual line it gives you a guideline to where things are going to be now okay just to hold it down 
I might cut out some of the ears as well. different making a little bit of sense what else we got strawberry tail no here's the tail that's why I needed to get two pieces and the head and the hood okay so the head strawberry strawberry hood the ear we've done that head tail everything else is the strawberry so, yeah, the next piece, really hope it is going to fit. Yeah, because we got the body, haven't we? Okay, cool. There we go, it'll fit that way. No. We need to sew on the line, so I probably do need to do it across somehow. Ugh. See, it's just figuring out. Don't really want to waste the fabric what about if I just do the head first cut two cut two and then I may have to sorry guys I am a bit of a uh, sew on the fly type of person. Um, and I'm just thinking when that's open like that, will that be enough for the head? At least one of them. We'll see how we go. Stitch. Pin. I remember we're sewing on the actual line, so me cutting it like this is not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, now I'm just wondering if I'm going to get one head in there. Yeah, I'm not. Ugh. So we really do have to be very careful. I wonder if it'll work that way. Okay. I think it will. Yes, there we go. More than one way to skin a cat, as they say. Okay. That's why it's good to take your pattern whenever you go anywhere and make sure that you... Um, I bought this pattern from... Is that line there? Um, from the same shop and the fabric from the same shop that I um, actually bought the thing from. Now, actually, better leave a line here and a line there so I know where to keep that open. And then on here, you keep the bottom open so that's pretty easy to remember. Okay. Okay, pin. 
is it's actually um, much bigger. I was thinking it was going to be more of the size of my little teddy bear over here, but this is a blunt as pin. Terrible. Okay. Hold that down. Maybe even one here. Okay, now the tail. Not this one, this one. Seems a bit of a weird shape for a tail, but you'll be able to understand it a bit down the track. Ooh, it's really cutting it fine, I tell ya. Wonder if we did it that way. Have to have that straight. Just so I know exactly how much of this felt I have got. Such an odd, odd angle. There we go. Got to remember we're going to turn this inside out, so it should be all right like that. Okay. I mean, it's cut me a little bit close to the edges here, but everywhere else is okay. Even if we bring it in a little bit, doesn't matter if it's a bit shorter, all good. Modify your pattern to suit sometimes. Now, come in just a fraction and then we put pin on that. There we go. Now I need to get myself a little. I used to use a little chopstick, which I've got in my kitchen. Um, there's a really neat trick on how to turn things inside out once you've sewn them, especially something like this, which is a little bit thinner, like arms and legs. That's what I'm missing. There's just the um, strawberry arm. Um, Aha! Uh -huh. Here we go, I thought. Oh, and she doesn't have feet. Ah, because she just plonks herself down. Okay, I'm thinking something seemed missing. There we go. So it's cut four. So I will. Oh. Okay. That's the arm. So that's two, hopefully, and we'll get enough out of this baby. Yep. There we go. Tells you the measurements of how much felt you need on your um thing anyway and you'll be learning some pretty cool stitches there's a ladder stitch which i use to close up things which is pretty cool 
Now, there we go. So that's body, head, strawberry, ear, tail. And that's just part of the tail and the leaf, which is on the top. Okay. So these are the parts of your actual bear, not bear, mouse. Um, I'm going to need some pink for the ear, and I've got quite a bit of pink here. Whether I do pink or I do that colour on the inside of the ear. Or do I do pink? And then I've got heaps of green, which I need for the leaf. Or this leaf, or this green. There we go. Oh, I've got a little bag of felt. Ugh. This is how old this bag is. I made this bag in textiles in high school when I was still Susanna Venema. <laughs> so I've had this for a really long time and now it's my felt bag. Okay, that's for the um, strawberry leaf. Um, what do you think? I think, yeah, I'm going to go the pink because um, it matches quite nicely with the, and they've got pink on that one. So we get the ears. I just thought while I'm tracing around, I'll do this. Get the ears. Trace around this baby. So you can see a bit of pen mark on there as well. The reason why I use pen is just it's so much easier to see it. And once it's turned inside out, you don't see it. There are special um, fabric pens that um, you can use but just use whatever works okay now now what we do is the body okay hang 10 I'm just going to read and then I'll come back and let you know Okay, guys, I am back. I've been reading the instructions, but I realised what the time was. It's 32 minutes. So the first part, we just, um, you know, trace out the, cut out the bits, put them on there and trace, trace them out. So for the second one, um, this is when we're going to be starting sewing. I also went into my kitchen and found a chopstick, also something like this. This is what you use to help with stuffing, um, but it also helps to turn things inside out and I've got an easier way of doing that I'll show you on the on the on the tail in the next episode okay guys thank you very much and I hope you um can do this along with me um you can do if you've got a a, a small pattern with a a teddy or whatever um you know it's something similar that you can do along just the same use the felt blah 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 and the techniques and everything will be the same just use whatever pattern you have but if you want to get have a look at these patterns are just adorable it, it is you can't really see it properly www.mayblossom one word dot com dot au and it's designs by simone gooding so there you go i don't know if you can see it properly there you, can you see it? it's starting to flicker there you go Okay, guys, I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.